Optical grade positioning without cameras. That's what the Rococo Coil Pro suggests. I've been waiting nearly three months for this to come in to test it out and see how much of an impact on quality it can have on a mocap suit that I'm already really happy with. Now on Rococo's site, they say, for the first time in motion capture history, harness the power of hybrid EMF and IMU sensor data to achieve optical grade global positioning without cameras. Now I've used mocap for nearly eight years at work and it's become such a big part of my process, so much so that I wanted to get a suit of my own. Now something that's standard across all mocap systems is cleanup. It's gonna always exist, but if something comes along like the Coil Pro, that can help minimize that process, I'm always down for it. In probably the simplest terms, this looks at the data that comes from the Rococo gloves. It looks at their world positional data in a radius around this and can feed that information into the rest of the suit for further positional data. And that data that is utilized is supposed to give you virtually drift-free mocap. Now I'm gonna put this thing through a handful of tests. And the tests, I'm gonna do two takes. The two takes that I'm gonna do are without the Coil Pro on and with the Coil Pro on. So let's set this thing up. So after recording, I exported all the takes from Rococo Studio and brought it into Maya and retargeted it to an Iron Man rig that I have. Now just to clarify, all this mocap is the raw data from Rococo Studio. I didn't do anything to clean it up either in Rococo Studio or in Maya. This is purely just retargeted from that program. So let's look at the hands. On the left is without the Coil Pro and on the right is with the Coil Pro. So far, pretty comparable, but where it really sticks out is the hands going over each other and the clapping. So you notice here, let's look at without the Coil Pro. Without the Coil Pro, the hands don't really know where they hit, um, where they actually make that contact. Already there's a drift immediately. And I calibrated before every single take just to be on an even playing field. But if you look at with the Coil Pro, I mean, this is great because it does stop. Is it perfect? No, it's not. You know, there's still uh, the fingers aren't completely straight. The palms aren't, you know, completely stuck together. But it's a lot easier to clean this up than it is to clean this up. So, so far, this is really good. The other moment is this kind of crossing over of the hands you see the first time it actually is pretty good without the coil pro but as soon as i go through and go again it's immediately intersecting so coil pro knowing where that you know world position is actually keeps it pretty good overall so for the hands take i'd say that it's pretty good results so far from the coil pro another thing that i'm seeing just as a difference this is partially from the retarget and the rig that I have. But the fingers here, you can see the thumb is actually pretty decent. It's not fully up like how I would normally, you know, count. But this looks a lot better than this. All right, here's a guitar. So the main thing that I'm looking for here is how it interacts with props. Because when you have sensors that drift as you're using, you know, holding a spear or an ax or something, having that two-handed contact is really good. And if it can really anchor that together, that's pretty great because most of the time it kind of moves around a lot. Now I'll say this, without the Coil Pro isn't too bad, 
I think with the Coil Pro, it's very small, but I get a sense that this left arm that was on the neck of the guitar is really kind of locked and anchored there. Without the Coil Pro, I do feel it being ever so slightly looser. It's not too bad, but this really does feel nice and anchored. So I feel like with an actual guitar asset there, you can be pretty confident that it's going to be where it needs to be. And it's not going to drift over time. And I've already seen these results. The last one is going to be a big indicator of this. So stick around. What I also want to see here with the guitar is the intricate, you know, uh, chords. Now I was just doing power chords, but you can really see that it holds its place pretty nicely. Now, if you need really close finger animation, this could be a very good start. You would have to retarget it though really well, I think, to get something out of the gate very usable. But I think this is a pretty good start. Moving on to the fight. So this is something that I typically use a lot. You know, most of the stuff that I do is action. At work, I'm usually doing action scenes, whether it's hand-to-hand -hand combat or, you know, other type of, you know, shootouts or whatever. So fight choreography is pretty important to me. And just judging at the start, I'm really liking the results. I mean, of both, both are pretty good. But getting that non-drift, you can really see the feet stick a little bit more. One thing that I noticed as well is that the punches are actually pretty nice. Now, obviously, I'm not a fighter. So I'm just doing what I think is a good punch. But I really like where that arm where that hand is coming from and really getting something that we always clean up and this still needs cleanup but one of the things in a punch is really just getting that straight impact because that is what really sells an impact of a punch it feels pretty good let's look at the without coil pro There's a little bit more of a floatiness to it. Let's see from the top. It's not too bad. So just comparing this punch, which feels much more like a straight line as opposed to this, which has a little bit more arc, but I do feel a little bit more favor in the Coil Pro. So, so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing results-wise. So the jump is a tricky one. Most suits have a special filter for elevation. This, I didn't use the elevation tracking. I wanted to see if the Coil Pro did anything to improve without elevation tracking. And in the beginning, on the first jump, you could see, you could see how without the Coil Pro, we really kind of dipped. With the Coil Pro, it goes a little bit, but not too much. It's not bad. I, it, it was promising. But then in the second one, it really kind of went crazy. So I'll need to do a follow-up on this with the elevation tracking. Um, but again, this is always something that's tricky with a suit. If I'm doing anything with elevation, I usually stitch something together if I need. And this is the biggest test of all. This is the move around for five minutes. Now you saw my video, I didn't really move around too, too much. I probably was in about a two step radius of a center point. But I wanted to see over time how much that drift really comes into factor. Now again, I calibrated right before this. So this is a fresh calibration on the suit. I hit record on my take. I went over to a timer on my phone and I basically just came back to that same point at the end to stop my timer and then I turned off the recording. So let's see, so I'm just gonna play this and 
you can see here, this is where I turn on the phone. So I put a cylinder here, and this is saying this is the point. And I did that for without the Coil Pro as well. So when I came over here, you can see that index finger, it's pretty much right on that cylinder. So that is our anchor point for this. Now, I'm not going to play this, I'm just going to scrub through, but you can see all the movements. And you can even see some of the things that I do with the hands. This was a fun little area to see. Putting my fists together, clapping the hands, and then putting them on my head. That's some pretty good results right there. Also, this is something that I just want to point out. This is a very small, subtle thing, but got me really excited about these results. Crossing the arms in mocap is terrible for cleanup. Um, it, it got to a point on a couple of productions that when we were doing it, it was like, do not, when you're acting, do not cross your arms because it is a pain to clean this up, to get it looking right. This though, out of the gate, looks pretty good. There's a little bit of jitter in it, but it holds pretty well, so this might solve that. All right, let's fast forward again. So we're just moving, moving, moving. This was another just kind of contact point. Not too bad. Needs a lot more cleanup, but not too, too bad. Okay, and we're getting down to the end here now. So now, this is the moment of truth, right? How much drift? Now, as I'm scrubbing through, it doesn't look like this guy moved that much and doesn't look like this guy moved really at all. But as I go back to the phone, I mean, look how much drift that is. That's pretty drastic. So that means that the feet, the root, are just sliding ever so slightly as we go across. Now, if we come to our Coil Pro guy, look at that. Immediate, exactly right on it. It's really exciting because that actually means that Rococo is truly delivering on their promise of virtually drift-free mocap. And... Is it exactly optical quality? It's not bad for an inertial suit. It's it's pretty great. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Coil Pro and the results that I presented here. And for more tips and tricks on how to stylize mocap, improve your mocap quality, and how to approach scenes from a cinematic standpoint, check these videos out here.